we have a, a website where we had quite a few people that asked if we would be recording it because they signed up, were really interested in the topic, but could not be here live to join us. So um, I have started recording. So just to let you know that, and um, we don't really put it anywhere other than on our website. So hopefully you feel comfortable. Um, please use the chat. Part of this has been very engaging. We've been doing this for about a month and we really would like folks to feel like this is more of a dialogue than a presentation. Um, there's a million places to get presentations these days. And that's something that we do, but we also know that there's a lot of genius, a lot of amazing things and problems being solved. And so we want a, a chance to talk about those things and share them on this platform. So that's what ILC PD is all about. Um, so just to give you a quick introduction, Stacy is with us and she is in here, but her mic is off because um, she is streaming to Twitter for us. So we are trying OBS and, and streaming this over to Twitter. So she's here and I'm sure you'll see her in the chat. Um, but um, Chris, you want to introduce yourself and then I'll go from there. Sure. My name is Chris Benick. I am, for those of you who don't know me, I am the Innovative Learning Catalyst for the central part of the state. I'm based out of Wilson. Uh, if you're looking at the map, the green area is um, the districts that technically I serve. But right now in the remote learning, well, I really at any time we can kind of cross over those lines a little bit and we work together. Um, I'm in my 25th year in education, 19 of which I spent as a high school Spanish teacher and football coach, um, five of which I was an instructional technology facilitator for Wilson County Schools. And now I serve as a, in a dual role as um instructional technology facilitator still in Wilson and um, as an educator on loan or innovative learning catalyst for DPI. And I am blessed and honored to be working with Stacy and Molly. And I feel the same. I mean, the fact that that Stacy has found a way to like beam us to Twitter is pretty amazing to me. It makes me feel very lucky to work with these two. That is not something this librarian thinks she could figure out. Um, talk about literacy. Yes, that's what I can do. So um, I don't want to speak for you, Stacy, but I'll do a quick introduction for Stacy because I, I know she's been working hard on getting us streaming. But um, Stacy is out of Catawba County, and she is um, formerly a science teacher and an ITF. So um, a lot of the work that she brings to our team is um, great middle school ideas and a lot of STEM and how science and math infuse everything we do. So. Um, she is our person in the West. She is uh, definitely um, teaches Chris and I a lot of things since we just came on board. The, I know there's quite a few new people that are that signed up for this. So just a quick introduction. But Chris and I started in the last year with this and um, it's been fun. It's been different. We've been working through a computer a lot more than we anticipated. We thought we'd be rolling a lot of miles. Instead, we're rolling a lot of hours of zooming and meets and all that good stuff. So um, and I'm Molly. I'm out in Dare County in the very far east. So I live in, in the Outer Banks. And um, I was a librarian in Manio for seven and a half years before jumping over and taking on this position as, as Innovative Learning Catalyst slash Educator on Loan. So thank you for joining us this morning. Um, and we are going to just jump right in with a couple of things. I think everyone so far usually by this point will have heard. I can't hear you. Or I can't see your screen. But if you have any issues at all, please use the chat. And if you don't know where the chat is, you just drag your um, if you're on a regular computer and not a, an app, you just dra drag your mouse and the little bar will show up and there's a chat box. So please use that. And of course, unmute yourself. This is a great about thing about, you know, having a small group is that We'd love to hear from you, and if you want to unmute and, and chime in on anything at all, we'd love to to uh, hear from you and, and make this, again, like I said, a dialogue. So on that note, yes, we're talking about reaching readers, and we're talking about literacy. But we figured we'd start with this. <laughs> We've done a presentation on podcasts, and Laura's here, um, and is using podcasts with students. But Chris, why would somebody want to use podcasts if we're talking about readers? <clears throat> well, I mean, and and I'm gonna switch over here if if Molly will click on that Why Podcasts link there in the presentation. Um, this is gonna take us to a, a site that we use when we're doing trainings on podcasts. But really and truly, as she scrolls down, we're gonna see a couple of infographics that talk about why podcasting is important. 
and how it helps literacy and specifically the one at the bottom um, that doesn't talk so much about the numbers of um, people listening to them, but rather um, as we're looking at it, you know, how, how audio itself promotes literacy. And there's a lot of information on this particular infographic that's important. I'm not obviously going to read all of it to you, but I will tell you that the things that stick out to me the most are things like the 85%. Um, 85 percent of what we know we we or learn we learn by listening um, I think that we forget that sometimes as a language teacher I was always working towards the four areas of learning which were listening speaking reading and writing and I think sometimes in in this day and age of testing we get really bogged down in the reading and the writing part but we don't necessarily emphasize the speaking and listening as much as we could and that's going to to spur a lot of learning in our students. The other um, number that strikes me is right below that, and that's that students in general can comprehend two grade levels above their reading level um, when they're listening. So if we want to push our students and we want to strive or have them strive to, to continue to get better, listening and podcasting can be a tool that we can use because, of course, we can use um, transcripts to have them read along and those kind of things um so a lot of there's a lot of uh, advantage to using podcasts of course if you look through and i would encourage you to, to look at this at some point but you know improving fluency all the numbers up there are important but those two are the ones that that hit me the most the 85 percent in the two grade levels i think really speak to the idea of helping with literacy through listening <laughs> So the other part of, of why I wanted to start with podcasts is, I don't know about y'all, but my attention span has been shot <laughs> since March. It has just not been what it's supposed to be. Um, and yes, I'm still a reader and, um, you know, I can sit down and read. It takes me a little bit longer to get going than it usually does. And I can't help but imagine that the same thing applies to our students. And so, um, you know, access to books, access to um audiobooks and ebooks are things that we're going to be sharing but um a friend of mine here in dare county who i have to give a shout out to ellen bryson is at kitty hawk elementary she was just named our district teacher of the year so shout out to her um love having the librarian with that kind of um recognition but she launched um when all of this started back in march she said you know they weren't doing book checkout she said what if we did a podcast club she's so good with book clubs um, and so she started a podcast club with um, some of her students. And, you know, what she put here is they listen to five episodes a week. It's short, but sweet, you know, and, and she encourages them to be on the move, you know, go ride your bike and or go for a walk or walk around your backyard or play with your dog, you know, do something while you're listening instead of just, um, you know, more of that screen time. And I thought that was a really very clever thing. So we're going to share a slide deck with you all so you can have access to all the links that we're sharing with you on here. And I'm sorry I didn't drop that in the chat. So Chris, if you have a second, would you do that? Um, share the slide deck would be great. Sure. Um, but I want you to have so all of this that, that I'm showing you right now about the podcast club, she created some some slides and some agendas and even some Kahoot games. So if it's something that you want to use with students, um, like I said, this is around the fiction podcast Mars Patel which is great for our, for elementary and, and middle grade. But um, if you want any access to her, her things, she's more than willing to share. So um, I thought it was worth mentioning that because it really is helpful to get those short spurts. And as Chris just told us, you know, there's a lot of literacy value in that. So I feel like this would be good. Laura, do you want to talk about how you've been using podcasts? Um, I have use podcasts very briefly with my students in the spring right before um, COVID. But um, this year, I especially wanted to create one to distribute from the, the library, the media center, because there's just a lot of power in hearing a, a good story well read. Um, I enjoy audiobooks, and um, I know that my students and um, even the ones who aren't like really big readers will get sucked into a story. Um, so I've been trying to do like a first chapter Friday for books that 
I know are really good and would interest students, but they they aren't flying off the shelf, that sort of thing. So that's kind of been my, it's really in its infancy right now. Um, I'm gonna pop into some classes today to, to really talk about it with students, but that's my idea for this year. I love it. I love that it makes something that is, it's very accessible, you know, to only listen to a chapter or listen to part of a chapter um so i really love that idea and, and great reader advisory you know that is tricky right now when you don't have students you know some people do have students in the building but they may not be coming to the library um just because of limited mobility around the building and whatnot so um and then the folks that are doing curbside pickup or anything just virtual i really love that idea um of them getting to hear from their teacher i i can't help but wonder you know there's probably a lot of teachers that are missing read aloud time and they don't know how they can incorporate a read aloud other than maybe a picture book or passages from a book but um i just think that's a really great way of being able to use this platform in a way that will encourage and, and reach readers that's the whole point of this conversation all right so a couple things that we wanted to cover and you know just giving some Shout out to, yes, Kathy says, I love listening to podcasts while doing drudgery chores. That's exactly me too. A um, lot of lot of when I'm cleaning up around the house and, um, you know, running a quick errand or whatever, I love an audiobook. I will definitely plug in audiobooks everywhere I go, but for the keeping up with the episodes and things, I like that, that same idea. So a couple things to share. I noticed a lot of our sign up was folks that are, um, oh, Perfect. So not Hayden. Hi, Amanda. I did remember seeing a bishop sign up, but I did not remember the first name. So um, I'm glad that you're here, Amanda. Um, so just a couple things to share about, you know, what's going on and how people are reaching readers. You know, Twitter is obviously a great place that things are being shared, but there's also so much on Twitter right now and so much on all the social media platforms that it gets really overwhelming. Um, and so, you know, because we're keeping this under the umbrella of literacy and, and how you're reaching readers, I just wanted to bring up a couple things. And if anyone had something to chime in about how you are doing any of these things, like, you know, please do use the chat on my or unmute your mic like Laura. Um, but Christy Allred is in North Davidson Middle School. She's doing this curbside pickup where, I, you know, a lot of people are doing it outside because kids aren't being welcome in the building if they're completely uh, remote. But, it, you know, what I loved about this was the flexibility of, you know, here the kids would come in and they could see what other kids are reading. You know, they're not tucked behind a mystery bag or whatever, but I just thought that was kind of a cool way of doing it. Um, and then Vanessa Calhoun, who is in Durham and is awesome, and I know we have some Durham librarians here, so um, let her know that, you know, I'm a fan girl. She knows that, but um, I have to show you this video. She like tripped out her, her minivan and she is the bookmobile and she is bringing so many books all over for her students and that, what I really loved about it was that not only is it packed to the gills with like everything you can imagine, um, when she gets to the back seat, you'll see that she's got different things like how she has it genreified and how the kids can find what they're looking for. And you kind of get a little flavor there, but she's got like shelves set up. It's amazing. Like just blew my mind. Um, so, you know, the creativity that some of these, these librarians and teachers, I have a, a teacher here in Dare County who is set up um, some bookshelves in her garage. And she's only about two blocks away from school. So the kids can come to her garage and like, you know, they set up a time and everything, but they're not entering her home. They're not, you know, it's, it's very prearranged and everything, but she's got so many books, it's unbelievable. So um, I really like the creativity that's going on about how people are, um, you know, getting books in kids' hands. So that hasn't stopped, you know, I know classroom teachers, I know librarians, and then there's also a lot of pairing up with public libraries. So I put the Durham bookmobile on here because I know that it's been very active and, and reaches a lot of different parts of the community. Unfortunately, that's not the case here in Dare County. Dare County is, is pick up only, which is great and fine, but you know, that's not necessarily equitable for people that may not have a vehicle or may not be able to go during work hours and things like that. So, um, you know, there's a lot to consider when it goes into 
delivering books and getting books to different parts of communities that are, you know, strung pretty far out here. Dare County, you think of just that chain of islands. Um, but we have a pretty significant community that lives in the mainland and there's no buildings, there's no library, there's no community center. So, um, you know, it's really important that we're kind of reaching out and thinking like outside the normal box, right? We're already being really creative, but I love this idea of teaming up and working with the public library. And then two other quick mentions is just the NC Kids Library. I know all the librarians in the group are probably familiar with this, but teachers may not be. Um, I love it too, and I'm like totally guilty of borrowing kids books from the NC Kids Library, not just for library purposes, but for myself. Um, but that it's, it's like 30,000 books now. I mean, it's unbelievable how many digital books there are. So I um, wanted to shout that one out and all you need is a public library card for access. So um, if you are a librarian or if you're a classroom teacher, um, you know, get your kids signed up for library cards, some districts, and I'm guessing there probably is some of that in here, you can use your student ID as your library card. I've heard of that. I really can't remember what counties I've heard that from. But here in Dare County, we had students sign up. Our library provided a form that was digital and the kids can just have a digital library card number. So it doesn't prevent them from overdue fees for physical books and things like that. Anyone else? Oh, have Go ahead. I can add about the student access um, with their student number. So yeah, that's through the state library, the Cardinal um, system. And and so um, school systems can partner with their public libraries and the state library to get that set up through the school district if they um, want to. And I believe it's called the Student Access Initiative. So if you're not familiar with that, um, this is Kathy Parker and I'll put my email address um, in the chat and you can shoot me an email and I'll send you the link to that or just go online and look up, you know, North Carolina State Library, you know, Student Access Initiative. We're all librarians, so y'all can, I know y'all can find it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's information and then, and they also have a list of um, the, the school systems that work with them on that. Um, so over the last couple of years, more have been added. And I think it's a, it's a great opportunity if your um, school system is able to work with the state library on that. That's perfect. Thank you for mentioning it. Because it's been something that, you know, I think making it as easy as possible, especially right now when parents are juggling so many logins and you know, student ID numbers and things like that. So Kathy just put her email address in the chat um, if anybody needs a little bit more information about that. But really it should be, you know, how can we ease access and, and pull down those barriers so that, you know, unfortunately it doesn't necessarily mean physical books in the hands of kids, but it does help with audio books. You know, so many of these books will read aloud to students, whether they're picture books that have the read aloud capability or audiobooks and the NC Kids Library, you know, I found quite a few middle grade and even some, you know, t lower teen, like not all the way up to your John Green necessarily young adult, but there's there's a really good variety, um, I would say up through like ninth grade readers. So don't don't assume that NC Kids means it's just picture books because there's a really great variety on there. All right, so moving through a couple other things and, you know, again, thank you, Kathy, for chiming in because that's really what we're we're hoping for. Um, I'm sure, again, knowing that this is a very library heavy group, which is my people, um, I will not get up at 8 a.m. and start chatting with folks unless they're librarians. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so Marley Diaz is wonderful and she is um, has just launched this this bookmarks um program where where different authors and illustrators and then you know other familiar looking folks um so i know that there's there's been some actresses um there's been which i think lupita is reading her book but there's common is reading a book so there's a whole variety of um of black voices being shared through this great channel so it's not just on netflix and that's why i wanted to bring it up because i'm seeing it everywhere I really wanted to mention that you can access this through her through the Netflix YouTube account. Um, yay, already been shared. That's so good. So they were shared with students during Wellness Wednesday, which is perfect. Love that link. Um, and so yes, so what I wanted to mention with it is, you know, what these people, what these 
um, different folks are doing is reading really great stories. And so it's great to share them, but it's also a great, you know, lead in, right? Show a few of them and have students do it, you know? And again, they don't necessarily have to be, it can't, doesn't have to be a book that they are reading because if they haven't had access to a book for a while, maybe it's like, what was your favorite book that a teacher read aloud to you in the last couple of years or something you remembered from last year? Um, you know, using Flipgrid, there's a, a variety of different tools, but I love that idea of just giving kids an avenue for chatting about books. Um, that's really how I know one of the questions that came up was how do we engage, um, how do we engage readers? And I think that it needs to feel, they need that community feel, you know, what they're missing from being in a library, what they're missing from being in a classroom is talking to their peers and saying, hey, what did you last read? You know, I can't tell you many times kids would come and say, I want the book that so-and-so read in October. <laughs> like I have to go look up what book that was. They don't even know the color of the cover, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, you know, building a community um, can be done through things like this, like Flipgrid, or um, I think we're gonna talk about this a little bit more because that's one of the questions that was submitted. Um, but Laura's, the first chapter podcast was another thing that struck out, that struck me as another great thing where if, if she or somebody took that idea and posted on Flipgrid, the kids could respond, hey, I'm really interested in that book, or I've read that book, and let me tell you about it. You know, that's another great way to build community. So Matt, do you want to talk about that? Or I see that you shared it. Thank you. Yeah, so um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. So Wellness Wednesday is just a, a day for our district of Durham where um, specialists or guidance counselors or admin come up with different activities that are not necessarily curriculum based or a part of like a kid's normal learning day. So like at my school, our specialist and our guidance counselor just come up with different activities, whether drawing activities or virtual field trips or um, me and my guidance counselor do like a diversity club um, to embrace diversity to talk with our fifth graders. So Wellness Wednesday is just a, a different day that kids can do something different mm -hmm. as opposed to just doing their normal um, schoolwork on, oh, for like a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday or Friday. Okay. It sounds like all the things that they are probably missing. <laughs> the social, you know, literally what social emotional learning stands for. Right. I think that's super important. Thank you, Matthew. Yep. So this was that was one of the things that that came up in the sign up was um, learning about some you know choices for online reading. So hopefully, you know, the NC kids, this Netflix, um, again, I know they're picture books, but there's some really good. It doesn't mean you can't use it with middle school and high school. <laughs> um, I used to work very closely with the high school librarian and she'd share picture books all the time with the students because the messages are very strong. So um, I love that you shared that, Matthew, on, you know, with your students. And again, that short, the short verse can be really, really beneficial. Um, another thing I wanted to throw out there for that idea of, you know, this, this person that submitted it said that they're using Epic, Sora, and Pebble Go. So those are all great resources. Um, another thought that I had was, you know, is anybody using articles or short stories or novels in verse, poetry, things like that, that you're at least maybe either you're using or you know some teachers are using? I just feel like that would be, um, again, back to access, right? Like podcast versus audiobook. It could be. You know, Newzella is really great for that. Um, ooh, fan fiction. Yes, thank you, Laura, for chiming that in, because that is another thing that it's high interest. You know, it doesn't mean that it's high literature. <laughs> That's OK sometimes. Um, if it's what will get them reading and get their imagination cranking, then um, I really love that idea. All right, couple other things. Of course, I clicked on something and it's going to open instead. All right. Um, if you are not aware, PBS Kids has had those same kind of ideas as the um, Netflix Marley Diaz is they have a lot of read alongs on there, like a collection. Um, and some of them, like Christian Robinson, is them reading their own stories, which is really fun. And you get that really cool thing to share with with your students. And then um, UNCTV has at home programming that's pre-K through 12. 
Um, so I put these links on there for you. So if it's something that you want to share out, what I really love is, is they're not just making suggestions, but there's like a full blown calendar. There's some resources like this one, for example, says reading time, recommended books by age or category. So you get, um, Kidlet TV. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. So there's a ton of, I, I don't like to be too resource heavy. However, these were all felt a little bit connected to what we were talking about today and it might kickstart a few people that are they're that struggling right with thinking about I can't physically give a book to a kid or I'm limited with how I can give books to kids um, you know there's plenty of things that if we're willing to be creative about what the word literacy means and if it's reading beyond just a physical book then there's a lot of options um, Emily just mentioned she just discovered kidlit.tv. Are you familiar with that, Molly? Or could maybe Emily tell us a little bit about that resource? Yeah, I have not heard of that. Tell us more. Well, I just discovered it um, myself yesterday, so I haven't had a ton of time to explore it. Um, but it looks like there are um, lots of different read alouds, you know, by celebrities um, or um, different people and then there's activities there's crafts there's book trailers looks like there's something called kidlet radio so maybe that would be something with podcasting um, so I'm always amazed when I discover what seems to be a really great resource that I've never heard of so I was excited to find this one so I'll have to check it out cool. thank you that's exciting so I just posed this question if you have other questions that you didn't get a chance to put in the um, in the form when you signed up. You know, use the chat, unmute yourself. Again, we're a small group, so I appreciate when we're able to make this a little bit more of a dialogue. Um, does anyone have suggestions for this one? I was thinking of NCY's Owl, of course, because there seems to be um, just about anything you'd be looking for <laughs> in this idea of mini reading prompts. Um, but again, I mentioned Newzella, which is a subscription base. So if your district has it, it is really helpful and it is easy to differentiate. Nice. AASL best learning tool. Kidlet TV is. That's really good to know. And again, like Molly said, this is interactive, so you can unmute and tell us about you know, some things that you use for, for these resources or? Well, I don't know what that is. Actively learn. But I want to know. Because that's something I keep wondering about. It's a paid resource. Okay. Well, a lot of them are these days. But that's understandable when you're getting hundreds of kids accessing something. I think of the, um, we had just bought, right before I, I left Media Elementary, they had just purchased, the PTO purchased the walk-in classroom kits and um, which is fantastic but again it's something that's sitting in a school <laughs> um, it's, you know it's something that's sitting in the school not being used versus you know coming up with a podcast playlist for example um, and Stacy said to we have a side chat going on and she said go open for mini reading so yes it's perfect you know go open and see if you haven't learned about it yet I highly recommend following Pam bachelor because she does a lot of webinars to get exposed to it if you haven't yet but I know again a lot of librarians in here you're probably ahead of that curve and um, you know but just just being searching for things based on interest based on um, you know if you know you have some students who will read anything you give them about Egypt <laughs> you know just going in there and finding some good quality resources about it can be really beneficial versus um, you know, if you just search by standard, sometimes that's really great if that's what you're trying to reach. But if what you're trying to look for is actual just content, I love that idea. So thank you, Stacey. So there, Rebecca said there is a free educator account for Actively Learn. So I'm going to go explore that a little bit. And it says, but we pay for the student accounts. Rebecca, isn't Actively Learn similar to, to like an Ed Puzzle kind of thing? I'm not real familiar with it, but where you can embed questions and things within articles and and uh, links and those kind of things. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. 
All right, I'm gonna go play with that a little bit. I love having something new to go learn. Um, and it makes me think, not that this is the same thing, but um, I had a really great PE teacher that I used to work with, and she works in another building now. And um, she was great about having, she print out little articles and things about, you know, the Olympics, for example, are supposed to be this year, but it'll be next year. So she would post little brief bios or articles on the walls. So when the kids were moving between stations and they had to wait for a few minutes before they could get to the next station, they would have something to read on the walls. And um, I've thought about her and I've talked about her a lot in that the idea of, you know, I would go to her and learn more about how to be active when I was in the, you know, how can I get kids moving around? The, the library was bigger than the gym. So how can I get kids moving through the library that's, you know, safe and not quite like the gym? But I think that applies right now, whether we're hybrid or we're fully remote, that, you know, as librarians or as reading teachers, you know, talk to your PE teacher and say, how can I get kids more active and not just sitting behind a screen? And, you know, what other suggestions do they have for set a timer and get the kids to stretch? You know, I've seen several people do that. Um, you know, they embed a stretch break in their slide deck when they're presenting to their kids or when they're you know, in the middle of a live lesson or whatever, which I think is really great. All right, we're going to move on. So I think we've talked about this a little bit. Um, how do we build and sustain a community of readers during virtual learning? One thing that I haven't brought up and I'd love to hear if anybody has um, examples of this is the librarians here are talking about doing some book clubs around different topics or themes. And wondering if anybody's had any success with that yet, doing any kind of book clubs, whether it's within a, a classroom like a lit circle or whether it's across a district or beyond. You can unmute. <laughs> so this is Elizabeth. Um, I have not done I did not do virtual book clubs in the spring uh -huh. but I am wanting to do like a whole school read aloud um, this fall so I've been talking with my PTA you know about getting the some funding to purchase books for those families who can't buy the book so I, I need to come up with the book that we're going to use uh -huh. um, so I'd love to hear if anybody has done something like the whole school um, read aloud or you know community read aloud what what you chose for that. So I'm thinking that I'll, I'll offer some virtual like discussion nights for families to kind of tune in and just talk with each other about the books. I'll probably set up a flip grid, you know, for those people who can't meet with us synchron, you know, to do a synchronous um, meet. So just thinking of ways like that to, to connect our families around a shared text um, and, you know, build our community of readers in that way. I really love that idea and the the community building that it does. I think that's really important right now when we when we do feel disconnected. Um, so I think my former school, Manuel Elementary, is considering doing the same thing. And um, a book that they were looking at and I had read, so I had talked about it with, with a couple people that are organizing it, is called The Last Fifth Grade of Emerson Elementary. And I can't remember the author's name, unfortunately. It's like Laura Chauvin, maybe it. And um, it's a novel in verse, so it would be a lot shorter than something like, um, you know, quite like Wonder, for example. I know Wonder was a big community read for a while. Um, but we thought that might be really neat because there's, if you haven't heard of this book, it's very... Um, there's a very diverse group of students and they are all, you know, it's documented through a year's worth of poems that they wrote, but it's more, again, it's more novel and verse than a book of poetry. And the kids are upset because their school is gonna get torn down. So one kid who gets elected to class president, so that's something to consider that you've got some election things in there that is about school election. So kind of avoids anything um, with what's going on with our current election, but also you can address it. 
Um, and then there is some activism in there. So the kids start trying to get the attention of their school board to not tear their school down. So um, it's very elementary appropriate. That was one of the big things that, you know, how do you find a K-5 book was what we were kind of questioning. But I think that it there's enough content in there that it would be middle grade too. Anyways, I don't want to just keep talking about a book. But I really love that idea. I could just, you guys, it's true. I could have coffee, coffee after coffee after coffee and talk about this. But um, what we thought is it would just represent our community very well with the, with the cast of characters. And I see Rebecca says she's been only working with her high school Bob team, which I think is awesome. You know, it's never too, it's never too early to start building that community. And, you know, I think too, that Oh, there are a lot of kids I had a hard time with this with elementary that they thought they could only read the books if they were in the group but I've I was always very you know welcoming to if you've read one of the books and just want to come chat about it with some other kids that have read the book come on you know and I can't help but think um I can't help but think that the um those kids you know virtual actually makes that easier right you can pop in anytime you don't have to stay after school or skip lunch or whatever um, yes, I don't know if it's available in Spanish, but I will tell you that one of the main characters is uh, Spanish speaking. So her poems are in Spanish and then one of her peers translates them for you. So they work together to translate it, which is really cool too. That stuck out to me. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little heads up in five minutes. I have an alarm set. Um, <laughs> So we're gonna take a moment to, you know, acknowledge it's 9-11 and 8:46 was when the first tower was struck. So I just wanted to mention that if we we're gonna just take a moment to pause when that happens. So if you hear my alarm go off, that's what that is. So we've talked a bit about this one. Does anybody have anything to add in terms of how you're promoting books virtually? So we're we're doing a couple. This is Matt. Um, so we're doing a couple things um, at our school. Um, one is I've set up um, kind of like cards that I'm putting throughout our school for teachers and then sending out to um, parents emails and putting on like our canvas pages of me just doing book talks of the different new books that we have nice. um, in the media center. And then we've also started something. This is an idea that I saw um, in the spring. Um, we're doing a, a series called You've Been Booked where different teachers in our building are doing read alouds. And then we're sending them to the various grade levels. So um, like this week or next week on Monday, one of our fifth grade teachers is doing a read aloud for K-1-2. And then our guidance counselor is reading um, a chapter of a book for three, four, five. So just trying to do some different things for, for our kids that is simple and easy. And it's also kind of easy for our staff to do as well. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I think that's really important too to think about how you know yes they're used to hearing their librarian um, talk about books but getting a variety of people to be promoting you know different stories and promoting literature is, is it's really really important it's important for the kids to see that and I like the idea of um, um, you know one thing that I think back on and I've seen a couple of my friends who have kids share that um, their kids have struggled, the younger ones especially, with like bonding with their teacher. That despite the teacher doing everything, right? Like not discrediting, there's teachers doing wonderfully creative things to try to build community and connection. Um, but you know, the the beauty of the librarian, the counselor, the art teacher, and so on is that those are familiar faces from the year before. So um, that's such a great way of you know recording a familiar face and and getting that to teachers to get to you. So. Um, it builds a school community, and I just think that it's a great way to help comfort some kids who might feel unfamiliar with new classmates and, and new teachers. Ooh, I want to know more about what books you used for read alouds that promoted discussion over racial and social justice. I want to hear more about that. <laughs> So this, the staff member, each staff member that read got to choose um, a story that spoke to them. And so I kicked off the summer reading series with Black is a Rainbow Color. Um, and each week we had um, something different that was read. Um, 
So I'd have to go back and, you know, and look at the list of all of them. I can put them in the chat. But so the each book was meant to foster discussion um, within the family. So give parents a way to talk with kids, maybe parents who um, aren't sure how to have conversations about, you know, these topics with their children. So. Well, thank you for sharing that idea. I think that's sometimes I think we feel like we need to, you know, I know Matt mentioned um, the the diversity club and I know some folks out here that are trying to do that but I really think what you shared is um is the first step right like just here's a story and here's some discussion questions um so Matthew Stacy just asked if you would explain the cards that you put up around and I'm gonna warn you that my alarm will go off probably when you're talking <laughs> okay so I was trying to um so basically it's just uh like a emoji of me and there is a uh, QR code and there's a picture of the book and the title just says what's new in the media center. And then when they scan it, it's just me doing a book talk of that book. So it's just an easy way for us to promote it, but kind of in a, a social distancing way is so they can just kind of walk around the, the halls and around our school as they please and they can just see what's new in our media center. And I can put um, an example on it as well. That would be awesome. Thank you. All right, it's 8.46, so we're just gonna take a few seconds to, to pause and reflect. All right, thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Matt, for explaining that. I think that helps with the visual of um, you know, I love this idea of how can it be socially distanced, but also accessible, you know, I think that's it's just huge. And again, it goes back to the creativity, you know, the amount of creativity that y'all are shared and that's out there is phenomenal. And I hope you feel like you should get the credit that you deserve for putting in that much effort and trying to reach kids and, and get books in their hands, or at least get them thinking about putting books in their hands. All right, so this was a question that I'm gonna not spend too much time on. So we've got a couple, we only got about 10 minutes left, it looks like, but um, I did wanna mention that this was a great question and I don't think the person is in here that asked it, but it was how to provide equity instruction during virtual learning. And my question back was, oh, perfect. Thank you for sharing. I see you shared it in the, um, the drawing in the chat. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, my first question back for this one was, do they mean fair and equitable instruction about reading? Do they mean um, instruction about, you know, equity in the world? So back to that, you know, social and racial justice. So I felt like this question could go a couple different ways. Um, but one thing that I did was I reached out and the very last slide of the slide deck is the full context. I am so not going to read it to you, um, but here it is. So I reached out um, to our elementary education um, director here in Dare County and I asked her this question. I said, how would you answer this question if I told you I was is having a conversation about, you know, reaching readers? So she explained what they're doing here in Dare County about um, how to make sure that reading instruction is equitable at the elementary level. And I think what stands out to me was that they are working one on one. The teachers are assessing students one on one. They're trying to find out reading levels um, and then they're matching students, you know, with intervention, with support and then also reaching up. You know, the kids who were were needing enrichment activities are getting enrichment activities around reading. They're not doing a one size fits all um in terms of of reading instruction so it was nice to see um you know that they're obviously uh, and i'm sure every district's the same but it was a it was a good exercise for myself to reach out to this director and say you know what are you doing to ensure equity with reading instruction so um anyone else having something to chime in about equity and reading instruction i really could have seen that going both ways like i said i could talk about equity in access. <laughs> I could talk about equity in our current climate, but. 
And I want to plug in something there real quick, just because of what you just said, Molly, even though it's not a response to this question. Um, advocacy for school library media programs and library media coordinators is always forefront in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I think equity and equitable access is such an important talking point for advocacy for library media coordinators, um, resources, library media programs, and even more so now that um, so much is online and so much is requiring uh, digital content now. So I just wanted to plug that for everybody when you're thinking of advocating, um, you know, looking at equity and pointing to how important you all are uh, for equitable access for our students. I think you're right. It is at the forefront of a lot of librarians' minds. And, you know, when I heard about the food put, food pickup and library book pickup in our district, um, a lot of it's limited between, you know, several hours in the middle of the day. And I couldn't help but wonder what kids are we not reaching because they have to come at a certain time in the middle of the day and it requires transportation. So um, I think you're very, very right that equity is something that many of us focus on, you know, whether we're talking about access to books, access to resources. Um, and yeah, so I think that was super important. Thank you for bringing that up. So this was the last question we had, but we kind of talked about this a bit. Um, uh, yay, thank you for those. So some more suggestions from Emily School about um, the books that they used. Jabari Jumps is one of my favorites. I love that one. A lot of those books are wonderful, but Jabari Jumps is such a fun one and a great like summer story. Not that it can't be read anytime, but just that idea of, of jumping in the pool. That's what he's trying to do, Chris. I'm sure you know exactly what book I'm talking about. Absolutely. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for that resource, though. I, I've been looking for more and more books to be able to promote, so that's awesome. Yes, it is. There's another Jabari book. I think it's Jabari Tries. I could be wrong, but that's what I think it's called. So are they sort of like the, I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I do have to plead a little bit of ignorance on those, but are they sort of like the other books that you guided me towards, the idea and the problem and that kind of stuff? Um, not completely, but kind of the same. I, I mean, the message of, so he's trying to jump off the diving board for the very first time. So he's just trying to, you know, it's it's all about kind of facing your. So yes, in that way, it is about facing your fears and, um, you know, taking the. Just kind right. of like thematically, maybe that was kind of. Yeah, the same yeah, idea. same kind of idea. All right, so we have just a few minutes left. Um, please ask if you have any questions. Or if there's something we haven't talked about and you're like, it's burning me up that we haven't talked about this yet. This would be the time. <laughs> and then we're gonna wrap it up here. So one of the things that um, we're working on and we're constantly putting out is podcast episodes. So I'm working on um, actually speaking of equity. We have a couple episodes we're going to be talking about around equity and access. So that's something to be listening for. And um, I had a great librarian who was willing to share some stories about how she's reaching readers. So that will be another part of an episode coming up on podcast PDNC. So I wanted to mention that. And some of you are familiar with it, but if you're not, you can find it on our website, but we're also on Anchor and Spotify and a couple other great platforms, right, Chris? Apple Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Pocket Casts. <laughs> yes, just a few. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I can get Chris to talk about podcasts. Y'all can get me to talk about reading and get yep. Chris to talk about podcasts and Stacy all the hacks. She knows how to do like the, I'm still just blown away that we're on Twitter right now. See, I had to to to, to stop myself from talking too much about podcasts earlier. So. I think most people would be okay with it. <laughs> Looks like we have podcast fans that are with us. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up. Give you back, you know, thank you for being here and, and spending an hour chatting with us and sharing ideas. Really, it's it's truly gonna be, I think, the best part of my day. So, um. I know it's early to say that, but I feel comfortable saying that. But if you'll give us some feedback, I know several of you have joined us before. So, you know, shout out. Thank you for filling this out before. If there's anything 
you want to give us specific feedback on, we do read them. Um, and bye, Emily. Have a good weekend. Um, so if you'll give us a little bit of feedback, let us know how we can make this better, if we need to do a different time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, thank you, Kathy, for mentioning. We actually have two conferences coming up. So next week is NC Bold, um, and that is a free conference put on by DPI. And there's sessions all morning, all afternoon, and even into the evening. So don't miss that. And if you just want to sign up so you get the notification when things are ready, recordings are watching, um, I don't blame you for that. And then NC Slamma is at the end of the month. Um, and that is as cheap as you're ever going to get to access NC Slamma. So all you need is a membership if you don't already have it, and then the registration fee, and you don't have to pay for gas, food, hotels, anything like that, because <laughs> everything's online. And the three of us, Stacy, Chris, and I, um, did a really fun ILC chat. So we did something similar to what you get here with us, um, but we, we have a blended versus virtual uh, PD session that we did. So that was pretty fun. Chris, you did podcasting for that one, right? I did, yes, ma'am. So if you haven't heard us talk enough about podcasting in the last few weeks, um, Chris does an awesome presentation on um, all kinds of great things about how to use podcasts and how to create podcasts. And then Stacy, who I know isn't here to, to unmute and promote herself, has a bunch of sessions next week. Like, I don't know how she's going to function after Wednesday. So she's right. presenting on some really good <laughs> strategies on flipped classroom. Um, that's happening next week. And um, I know she's been tweeting about it. So if you follow her on Twitter, you'll see some of her sessions. But she's got some really great content about flipping, especially with hybrid and remote. And um, next week, I don't have a graphic up there, I'm sorry, but um, next week's session on Friday, we don't have a time picked yet, but um, we'll be on flipped classrooms, right, Chris? Yes, that is um, the plan right now. We're going to talk about uh, flipped classrooms and, and the virtual environment and that kind of stuff that we're in. Stacy's probably going to be leading that one. I'll be here co-piloting again. Perfect. Molly, will you put the first slide back up for us? Yeah. As we finish up. That one? Yep. All right. All right. So does anybody have any questions, comments, things you want to share or say? We really appreciate y'all being here. Again, we say this every week, but our, our hope is to make this interactive, not just a thing where you sit there and listen to us drone on. So, you know, share and consider coming back. And if there's something you specifically want to talk about, please let us know. We'd love for this to be a place where, you know, all of you come in and do a whole session yourself or lead a conversation. So truly, if you have something, reach out, let us know. I've bugged Laura a little bit and I know it's a busy time right now. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks slash months, we can get her to come on and do something. Yeah. We want to share everybody's greatness. Uh huh. And the same thing with the podcast. If you guys have any stories you want to tell, whether it's around pedagogy or lessons and things, or if you have just a good story, I'd love to put you on a podcast too. Yeah. If you're not familiar, we actually have two podcasts. The podcast PDNC is is the one um, that's our that's our pedagogy based, I guess you'd say, podcast. And then we have Moments of Inspiration, which is our I like to say our anecdotal podcast where we tell stories and and share funny or good or touching whatever kind of stories with each other from our teaching world. So we kind of have we're looking at two different sides of it, I guess you'd say. Laura and I were tweeting earlier this week about a book that we both have read. And I think should they have she with two other people have tech plus book podcast. So I said, I think we need to do like a a dual episode oh we need to do a crossover yes i know wouldn't that be cool yes i'm all about that that would be funny because we have three people and you guys have three people <laughs> six people recording a podcast would be it would be an ensemble cast yes i feel like that would be a lot of fun though we could like do a, a two-parter probably because i'm sure we get enough content out of it uh-huh uh-huh
And the book we're reading, Chris, it's, I've, I've posted about that she said she was reading, is about Molly, who has the podcast. Well, there you go. I know. I know. All right. We said we were going to stop, but, you know, then we started talking about podcasts again because that's what we're going to do. All right. Thank you all so much for being here. Hopefully it was helpful. And I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend. I had to find the hang up button. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs>